welcome to MSP lecture series on advanced transformational chemistry. In my previous lecture I had initiated discussion in my previous lecture I had initiated discussion on metal metal multiple bonding and also I gave you some background to metal metal multiple bonding by the work carried out by Cotton's group especially while working with rhenium salts. Let us continue from where I had stopped. Before uh, we try to establish a bonding concept such as molecular orbital theory to understand the nature of these bonds, let us try to classify the metal metal bonds we come across among coordination compounds and organometallic compounds. In general, there are three class of metal metal bonding we come across in coordination chemistry as well as in organometallic chemistry. They are covalent bond, first one is covalent bond. So, here they are electron precise bonds, mm bonds counts as one electron from each metal center. So, most common type of metal metal bonding uh, we use while electron counting and also to know whether a given complex satisfies 18 electron rule or not especially when we have more than one metal center in a complex. So, uh, that means this is a covalent bond and then we have another type of bonding called dative bonding. So, one metal uses a lone pair from the field d orbital to coordinate to an empty orbital on a second more unsaturated metal for simple electron count purpose can be considered as covalent bond, but here what happens one metal is electron rich, other metal is electron poor and it has vacant orbital. So, that the electrons can be given very similar to what we come across in case of acid base interaction, Lewis acid and Lewis base interaction that is called dative bond. Uh, for example, if I take a metal center having uh, 18 electrons and other metal having 14 electrons. So, it can give and that can also become 16 electron complex if not 18 electron. Now, we have the last one very rare one that is called symmetry metal metal bonding. What does it mean? So, weak metal metal interactions caused by molecular orbital symmetry interactions of filled empty metal metal bonding and or anti bonding orbitals seen in case of D8 metals. But they are less common in nature. Now, let us come back to Re2Cl8 dianion here you can just imagine this molecule in this fashion or in this fashion and here uh, this xy plane is there and your principal axis is z axis in which 2 rhenium atoms are establishing a metal metal bond. And now we have 4 chlorides here and 4 chlorides are here and here for all practical purpose let us consider this as z axis here and then this is x y plane and, and accordingly we have to consider the d orbitals for their overlapping to establish various bonds to accommodate these electrons present on metal to arrive at different bonds between 2 metal centers. So, here we have a quadruple bond that is 4 bonds between 2 rhenium atoms and we have to show uh, convincingly using a MO diagram. Let us say if you consider this is the z axis. If it is the z axis what happens we have x square minus y square is there and then little angle we have x y at 45 in the same plane and then we have d x z and then d y z is there and d z square will be in this fashion. So, that means now if, if 2 rhenium atoms are in z axis let us say they can overlap something like this, they can overlap something like this, this is d z square. So, this overlapping you can call it as sigma bond. And now, if we talk about pi bond, let us assume this is dxz and this is another dxz, this is another dxz from 2 and if they overlap this is pi overlapping, this is 1 xz and then this one, 1 is yz. So, this will degenerate, so that accounts for 2 pi bonds and then this one is dz square accounts for 1 sigma bond. Now, we have x y is like this now, x y is like this. If the x y is like this, now they do not have any option other than overlapping like this. This kind of overlapping we do not come across in main group chemistry or in organic chemistry when we talk about pi bonds because this is not pi bond, pi bonds will be something like this, this is dxz and this is dyz and then this is dz square and now if you look into the orientation xy is like this, so they overlap sideways. 
So, this is x y. So, this is responsible, this is called delta bond. The higher energy, energy of this one is very high and the lowest one is uh, uh, dz square. Okay. And the next one will be the, these two dxz and dyz and then we have dxy. Okay. Now, assume like this it is there, this is the z axis and one dz square is there, another dz square is there. And now if you ask me why we are using only 4 orbitals such as dz square, dxy, dxz and dyz, why not dx minus y square? If you just look into this ML4 square planar complex formation and if you recall again valence bond theory, in valence bond theory we are using sp, dsp2 hybrid orbitals. If it is a dsp2 hybrid orbitals, the d orbital is dx minus y square. That means dx square minus y square is already participated in making metal to ligand bond as a result that is not available for metal metal bonding. That is the reason we are not considering. So, other orbitals that are left unutilized while making metal to ligand bond are dx square minus y square is used. So, dxy is not used, dxz is not used, dyz is not used and also dz square. That is the reason we are using these 4 unutilized bonds to establish bonds between 2 metal centers. Now, so you bring this Cartesian coordinates, so that can give you precisely the orientation of uh, different orbitals. Once again, you take this one here, another plane, so another plane. So now, we put now this is what we are considering 2 r in this plane. So, you can see now how sigma bond is established between 2 dz square which are along z axis. So, now with this one let us continue forming other bonds. So, one bonding molecular orbital is formed, one anti bonding is formed here and now this is sigma bonding and this is sigma star bonding. If two electrons are there, one electron here, one electron here, they come here and one sigma bond will be established. Next we have dxz and dyz, they degenerate here. So, they overlap like this and they overlap like this to generate bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals having pi symmetry. So, two are there. So, capacity is four electrons. Now, consider dxy and this dxy will be forming delta and this will also be delta, but this is sigma bonding and this is delta anti bonding. This is delta bonding whereas this one is delta anti bonding. So, this is how you can explain quadruple bonding here. If you have 4 electrons are there 1, 2, 3, 4. So, here 2 electrons are there, here 4 electrons are there, here 2 electrons are there, 8 electrons are there, here we do not have any electrons. So, bond order would be C8 minus 0 by 4. So, that is 8 minus 0 by 2, so that is 4 bonds. So, that explains the delta bonding or quadruple bond between 2 rhenium atoms. So, now to make it clear again I am showing you. Uh, so, this is sigma bond, this is one of the pi bonds and this is the second pi bond and then this is the delta bond with dxy to sideways overlapping. Okay. And now that leads to this sigma molecular orbital and this one and this one two pi bonds in this fashion at orthogonal to each other and then we have the delta bond. So, that means we have a sigma bond two pi bonds and one delta bond they are responsible for making bonding molecular orbitals and remaining will go in the same sequence delta pi and sigma they will be anti bonding orbitals. So, this is how using in a very simple way one can explain the multiple bonding between two metals in coordination chemistry. To even further simplification I have used these cartoons you can see this is sigma bond head on collision and this is one of the pi bonds. Okay. Now, this is orthogonal another pi bond and now we have delta bond. I hope it is very clear now how to write bonding molecular orbitals and anti bonding orbitals to show the magnitude of bonding among coordination compounds if there are 
metal metal bonds. So, now I have shown here what will happen if you have more than 4 electrons. So, that means D1 D1 we put 2 electrons here that results in a single bond and D2 what happens we will be having 2 electrons here and 2 electrons. So, bond order will be 2 so it will be a double bond if you have triple bond we will be having uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2 here 6 electrons 3 from each. So, we have a triple bond and if you have 4 electrons from that means D4 system we will be having a maximum bond order of four that is called quadruple bonding and then the fifth one will be if you have one more electron so that goes here a pair so that means 2, 4, 2, 2, 10. Now, now the bond order will decrease so it will become a triple bond. Similarly, if you go with the D6 electrons then it will become double bond and D7 up to here completely filled you have a single bond if D8 system both anti bonding and anti bonding are completely filled. So, bond order is 0 no net bonding results in case of D8 system in this fashion. So, this can uh, you know give an idea about the nature of the bond through simple electron counting here simple electron counting and placing them here what you should remember is you should remember 1 sigma 2 pi delta delta star pi star sigma star that is it and uh, dz square is responsible for sigma bond and dxz and dyz are responsible for 2 pi bonds and dxy is responsible for delta bond and in a similar fashion. So, we can see the corresponding anti bonding molecular orbitals. Now, let us look into some examples here. So, 4 electrons as I mentioned you can start putting here 2, 2 first they are singly occupied and then you have they are doubly occupied 6 and then yes. Okay. So, this explains now 8 electrons are there in the bonding. So, bond order is 4. Now, let us look into this molecule here. First you have to identify tantalum nothing doing identify tantalum metal here. Okay. Tantalum means where it comes you should know vanadium, niobium, tantalum that means it has D3S2. D3S2 means 5 electrons are there, if 5 electrons are there and you have to identify anionic ligands. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 are there, it has a symmetric structure. So, that means each one would contribute 3 electrons, so that the titanium is in 2 plus state. D3S2, D3S2 loses uh, 3 electrons and then we have a D2 system here. If D2 system is there you can go back to the previous diagram and see whether we have a double bond between 2 tantalum atoms. We have a double bond between 2 tantalum atoms and then here the tantalum, tantalum bond is 2.68 angstrom units. Now, let us go to uh, another example here. So, now we look into this one each molybdenum has 2 carbonyl groups and 1 Cp group is there and of course, here molybdenum is let us consider D4S2, D4S2 6 electrons are there and now 1 is negative. So, molybdenum should be in plus 1 state as a result what happens this is a D6 becomes D5. If D5 is there you should recall the previous diagram I showed you. So, D5 will result in how many electrons it is D8. So, if you put here 2 electrons, 4 electrons here and then 2 electrons here and 2 electrons here. So, this is sigma 2 pi and then delta delta star. So, 10 2 4 6 8 minus 2 8 minus 2 6 by 2. So, there should be a triple bond yes there should be a triple bond. Okay. So, triple bond is there. So, okay. so now you go to this one here. So, here we have trianionic uh, ligands are there. So, molybdenum in the same molybdenum D4S2, but uh, molybdenum is in plus 3, 3 plus 3 state means uh, what we have is out of 6, 3 D3 system. So, D3 system how to write? So, here, so here 6 electrons are there from uh, 1 D3 here and another D3 here. So, we have what we have is 1 sigma 2 pi. So, it should be 3 triple bond. So, triple bond is there. So, this is how you should be able to identify the magnitude of a metal metal bond simply by electron counting 
and then adding those electrons to already established MO diagram that I have given to you in the order sigma 2 pi delta delta star 2 pi star and then sigma star again. So, here molybdenum molybdenum distance is 2.17 Anstrag units and it has a triple bond. This is almost identical with uh, Re2 Cl8 uh, dianionic compound. So, D4 system, this is again D4 system. And what is interesting is despite CH3 groups are very bulky, still it prefers eclipsed conformation so that it can establish delta bond. What happens the other one turns this way, what happens your XY? would not be having in the same fashion, it will be something like this, they have to be something like this, both the x, y. If it turns something like this, there is no overlapping. So, in order to have this one facing each other exactly like this for sideways overlapping, they have to be eclipsed. That is the reason uh, despite it overcomes kinetically uh, stable staggered conformation and prefers eclipsed. Of course, in order to minimize what happens, it lifts these 4 orbits little up and this one down so that it can have a quadruple bond. Okay. Okay. So, now uh, this is very similar to what I showed for molybdenum again you should anticipate a triple bond between these two chromium atoms. Yeah. Here chromium chromium distance is 2.27 Einstein units. Now, let us look into this example here. In this example again uh, we have this pyridine is there on each one neutral ligand and we have a bisphosphine is there bridging two metal centers niobium, vanadium, niobium, tantalum and we have again a D5 system 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are there that means we have to get rid of 3 electrons for each one. So, it is D3, S2 is that let us assume D5 if you remove 3 electrons it becomes D2. So, D2 system in D2 system you will be having a, a double bond between these two. Okay. So, that means in this one it has a double bond between two niobium atoms. It is very simple, it is much simpler than doing 18 electron rule, but do not mix up 18 electron rule with this way of electron counting, they are two different entities. Uh, you should remember, you should not even make an attempt to make it satisfy or obey 18 electron rule because early metals or metal ions having less than 6 electrons in their d orbital which are available for bonding you cannot have even with octahedral geometry you cannot satisfy 18 electron rule. So, 18 electron rule is a different concept and then looking into the nature of the metal metal bond in this kind of molecule is a different concept. Please do not try to mix up even if somebody asks a question they are referring to uh, different concepts, okay. one need not have to worry about that one. But there is no harm in verifying whether a given molecule the magnitude of the bond metal metal bond can be explained using both the methods. We may have some examples, but you cannot generalize for all complexes or coordination compounds both the methods. Now, let us look into another interesting molecule here. We have osmium compound, we have 4 acetates are there and also we have a osmium chloride bond on each one. So, that means here you should know that acetate is a monoanionic 1, 2, 3, 4 monoanionic are there and 2 uh, negative are there. So, that means basically 6 anionic ligands are there each one should go to osmium. So, they pull out 3 electrons from each osmium metal. Osmium is D6S2. So, out of 8 electron D8 electrons you have to take out 3, 3 means you will be osmium is 3 plus this is a D5 system is a D5 system will be having a triple bond. Okay. How D5 system will be triple bond again 2 pairs here sigma pi 2 pi and delta we have 2 electrons and then delta star we have 2 electrons. So, 10 electrons are accommodated. And now what we have is a triple bond. So, 8 minus 2, 6 by 2 equals 3. So, you should have a triple bond. So, easy. So, you can see now triple bond, bond order is 3. So, this is how no matter which metal line is given. You can also say how many bonds are there whether the 
bonding is possible or not all those things you can analyze simply using uh, this a very general uh, MO diagram. So, now I have another uh, interesting molecule here I have shown the molecular formula I have given here and how to write the structure yes you can take the compound here. So, this is how the ligand is described. If you see here the valence is not satisfied this should be negative charge this should be negative charge and this is phosphonium positive charge. So, that means two negative charge and one positive charge is there and then this can also one can write something like this. So, it should be something like this. So, now this looks almost isoelectronic with acetate that means we have four of them are there how the four of them will be forming bond something like this 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, that means just one I write So, then another one should be something like this I can write another one I can write something like this other one something like this now 4 are there. So, 4 are there and this is a let us assume we have 6 electrons are there 1, 2, 3, 4 anionic are there to each. So, it will be a D4 system if it is a D4 system very similar to rhenium case you can anticipate a quadruple bond between them ok you can see. Yeah, anionic ligand and then resonance structure when you write yeah this is how the structure you can write and you can see yes yeah, this molecule has a quadruple bond. So, 4 anionic ligands and 2 chromium atoms are there and chromium is in plus 2 state once it is in plus 2 state it is a D4 system obviously it shows quadruple bonding. Let me stop here another interesting question that comes to your mind is whether we can have more than 4 bonds between 2 metal centers yes we can also have 5 bonds that is called quintuple bond. So, what are the conditions for a metal complex to have a quintuple bond let us discuss with a couple of examples in my next class until that ok enjoy metal metal multiple bonding concept reading and understanding it.